Now, how does the functional range release system differ from other systems in terms of the treatment? There's various reasons and ways that you guys are all going to see throughout the course of the weekend. But the most important thing, that the most two most important things that differ FR release from other uh, systems is application time as well as the intent of treatment. The second way that it differs is in terms of intent. We just talked about how the uh, fascia and the, the anatomy of the fascia has certain layers. We have fascial superficiality on top of fascia profunda. Now sliding occurs between these layers. So when superficial fascia slides on top of profunda fascia, we refer to this as interlayer sliding. Okay, interlayer. It's going to be a very important concept. When sliding occurs between levels of profunda fascia, so if a muscle is sliding past another muscle, or if a muscle bundle is sliding past another muscle bundle, or if a muscle cell is sliding past another muscle cell, we refer to this as intra-layer sliding, or within-layer sliding. So inter means between layer, intra means within layer. Under normal circumstances, in, a normal in order to have normal biomechanics, both of these types of sliding have to occur. But with injury, comes fibrosis. With injury comes scar tissue. So with injury comes a loss of this relative sliding or this relative motion. So injury can cause uh, fibrosis between the fascia superficialis and the profunda or it can cause fibrosis between the profunda fascia within its levels of profunda fascia or between the profunda fascia and the deepest fascia. Increased fibrosis leads to increased friction, increased pain, decreased force production, and altered biomechanics. Now, a lot of people will ask, how can adherence of the fascia superficialis, or the subcutaneous layer, how can that affect motion? The best way to explain this is, if I ask you to swing your leg over your head while you're wearing a skin-tight pair of jeans, it's not going to happen. So think of the fascia superficialis as that outer layer of clothing. If that outer layer is tight and is very tightly adhered to the skin, you're going to restrict motion, okay? And it's obvious how with one, in the profunda fascia, when one muscle is attached to another, it's obviously going to change the way that muscle functions, okay? So, treatment, if we said that our treatment is focused on changing fibrosis or breaking down fascial fibrosis or scarring, therefore treatment must be uh, utilized in order to restore normal planes of sliding between fascia. Now we really have to understand what scar tissue is here. I just said the scar tissue was deposition of collagen in an aberrant pattern. But scar tissue just doesn't lay down by itself. It's not like scar tissue is just put into an area independently. No, it's attached from one thing to another. So a piece of collagen has to either attach or stick to a muscle cell, stick into another muscle cell, or it has to grab on and attach from one bundle to another bundle, or it has to be between muscles in their epimesial layer or between the superficial fascia or, and the, the fascia profunda. Okay? So it has to attach to something. Okay? That means that during soft tissue application, we have to utilize movement in order to break down fibrosis. If we don't utilize movement, it is impossible to break down fibrosis. So soft tissue techniques that don't utilize either passive patient movement or active patient movement they might be doing some other effect, maybe on the nervous system, on circulation, but they are not breaking down scar. Okay? And I'm going to give you an example of this, a very simple example, which I did with a, a pencil and some cotton ball. If we think of one pencil here as a muscle bundle, or a muscle itself, or just a muscle fiber, and then we take another pencil which will represent a different muscle bundle or fiber. In between these two bundles, we have fibrosis, represented by cotton. And as you saw on that picture previously, that's pretty accurate representation as to what fibrosis or what fascia looks like, okay? So let's call this abnormal fibrosis. There's always some adherence between a muscle and another muscle, or a bundle and another bundle. But let's say that this is an increased density of scar tissue, meaning it's abnormal. If we apply compression to that tissue and slide over the surface of the skin, so let's say, for example, we apply some oil to the surface of the body 
and we start to do some effleurage or some other type of, of, of manual uh, care, massage or something like that. If we're only putting compression and sliding over the skin, you see that we're not actually changing the relative position of the muscle on top of the other muscle or the bundle or the fiber or the uh, muscle fiber. And the scar tissue itself is becoming compressed, but it's not actually breaking. Okay? If we actually want to cause a breaking of that scar tissue, we're going to have to create relative motion. So by sliding one layer on top of another layer, you see now that the scar tissue begins to lengthen. And if the application is done for a long enough period of time, we will get fibrotic release of the tissue. Okay? So because we're creating relative tissue motion, this could be between fascia superficialis and some kind of profunda, or between within the profunda layer, that's how we break apart fibrosis. So I'll give you a good example to drive this point home. Let's look at um, one of those uh, instrument-assisted soft tissue techniques. Okay? There's various instrument-assisted soft tissue techniques around. With an instrument-assisted technique, you're applying a lubricant to the surface of the skin, and then you're sliding the, the instrument across the surface. But as, you can, as we saw by this example, if you're sliding the instrument across the surface, we're not changing the relative position between the areas that the scar tissue is attached to. And if we're not changing the relative position, there's no way to stretch and break apart that scar. Okay? So am I saying that these soft, the soft tissue instruments are useless and not doing anything? I'm not saying that. But what I will say is they cannot break apart soft tissue fibrosis or scarring. Now the next problem is, is that a lot of these tissue, that these instruments, they claim that you can feel soft tissue adhesion with the instrument. Have you heard this before? That if you scrape across with the instrument, you can feel grittiness. What you're feeling is actually pockets of fat pockets of adipose tissue located in the fascia superficialis. You remember that I said fascia superficialis is a lattice work of, of uh, fascia which separates fat into pockets. So when you go over with a soft tissue instrument and you feel that, that grittiness, you're simply feeling these pockets of fat. There's no way that you can slide across the skin and feel uh, actual scar tissue. Scar tissue is microscopic, number one. And number two, if there's no motion, you cannot feel scar. Because we don't feel scar tissue. Nobody here has ever felt a piece of scar tissue. All we feel is tension within the tissue. The tension represents scar tissue. And we cannot feel tension unless we apply movement to the body. Does that make sense to everybody? 